Welcome to the Standard of Truth podcast, hosted by historian Dr. Garrett Dirkmott, where we explore the early days of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and gain rare historical insights into how a young farm boy was able to establish a new church and grow it by way of visions, manifestations, and miracles. Welcome to another episode of the Standard of Truth podcast. I'm not your host, Richard LeDuc, and I am joined today... Professor. Professor Richard LeDuc. Professor. We had, we had someone uh, write into the podcast with a question, um, and we, we got a lot of questions. It's hard to answer all of them, and we'll try to get back to that at some future date, talking about that, but... Um, I love me. I love me some Tanner S. There was one question that was asked by someone Tanner who, with the first name of Tanner, last name starting with S, that said Doctor Dirkmont and Professor Leduc. And now I demand my children call me Professor Leduc. Yeah, and my children <laughs> he doesn't even live here. It's All children. It's very. It's a very awkward thing. So in this podcast, this is a special bonus podcast, and what we want to do is get to know a little bit more about the man behind the history. I would just like to point out that I am totally opposed to this podcast and the idea behind it. Um, I feel as though the podcast is being taken over, as though Richard were some kind of wealthy donor. Which we all know he's not. <laughs> this is true. Well, we so we are joined. Uh, we are joined at this podcast uh, by uh, Garrett's wonderful wife, Angie Dirkmott. If there's somebody who wants to do this less than Garrett, it's me. But welcome. <laughs> we are also joined by Garrett's longtime brother, Dallin. <laughs> yes, long time. Forty three years. Uh, I have been Garrett's older brother. I'm very happy to be here. Huge fan of the podcast. And uh, finally, after how many episodes is it, I get to show up? Uh, uh, where are we at? 30 or something? I, uh, yeah, something. something I like can that. only assume it's because he thinks at some point we're going to monetize this. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so, so we, when, Back when we had zero downloads, where was he? <laughs> so we, we've received several requests from uh, friends and listeners uh, to the podcast that have wanted to know a little bit more about Garrett. And so we're kind of using this opportunity of the holidays where we have a bunch of family uh, all together to get a little bit uh, more... Uh, insight on Garrett, uh, him as a boy, uh, him uh, growing into a man, and then him choosing a career of little to no uh, money. Why uh, don't we wait <laughs> until tomorrow when my mom's here? Oh, that would be great. Yeah, it would yeah. be great to get Renee in here. It's because right now she's still attempting to download the podcast. She hasn't been able to listen to the first. It's great because she keeps downloading them, but she hasn't listened to any of them. If she was a guest on the podcast, would that mean no one would listen? Because she already said it. <laughs> She's the only one that listens. I think technically, yes. If she were a guest, we would lose all of our downloads <laughs> because she's the only person. Actually, I have to give a call out. There's actually another. Uh, there's a woman in my ward, Rachel, whose mother also apparently downloads the show multiple times. And so I can only assume that between the two of them, they are downloading the show thousands of times. Yeah. yeah. So this this bonus podcast is a shout out to Renee Dirkmott and Rachel's mom. We'd like to thank you for your patronage. So what we're going to and talk- for, And for life, honestly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, both Renee and Rachel's mom. <laughs> So uh, we're going to start with Dallin, who uh, who really, we have received several requests for this, but Angie has literally been fighting against this for forever. She's been a saboteur. She's been turning the power off. She's been doing all kinds of things to not have to do this. She because... almost became a Lutheran for part of it. <laughs> she, she did. It's all true. It's true. Uh, but so Dallin really wanted to push us. He wanted to share a couple of stories of his brother as uh, as a boy. And so we'll go ahead and kick things off with Dallin, who, who might have one or two stories to share about uh, about Garrett. Well, um, I guess one of the things that uh, I wanted to share about Garrett, I think a lot of people have been listening for a while and wondering, who is this guy? Like, what, uh, what makes him tick? And uh, Garrett has always been so um, obviously brilliant, but uh, he's loved history since he was little. 
And I can remember sitting on the floor with him going over history books when we were kids. And, um, uh, and so he's always been a huge fan of it. But um, I think one thing I wanted to share is that people don't, don't might not know about Garrett is, is he's not just a, a smart guy, but he's also, uh, he's always been since he was a child, a very good person. And he's always, uh, he's always stuck so close on that, that straight and narrow. And uh, Garrett's a person who has never in his entire life said a swear word. That's probably not true. <laughs> Someone who never, <laughs> I've never heard it, Gary. Well, I, I'm sure. But maybe in your it, mind, but I've never just said so it. First of all, absolutely in my mind. Uh, <laughs> let's just put that out on the table. So, so many swears in my mind. And probably some right now, since this podcast is completely <laughs> against my will. Um, but, uh, I, I'm I'm sure that when I was, I was a little kid and you're, I'm sure I've never I, heard it. No. As an adult. No, but. no. Even when the uh, when your when your ferrets was a kid, one of your ferrets uh, was murdered by I, a, I think you, a neighbor. You probably should not start any story that involves one of your ferrets, <laughs> Garrett. Who who knew when your life started with so many ferrets that you would end in uh, in just total? Uh... That sounds like I'm a ferret rancher. <laughs> like I've got thirty head of ferret. <laughs> it felt like it. So it does remind me of a story, though. Um, one uh, one Christmas, we're getting Christmas season now. One Christmas uh, um, time, we uh, Garrett had some ferrets. He was a ferret farmer, and we decided that he was going to sleep down in my bedroom on Christmas Eve while we waited for Santa. And so we thought we just let those ferrets we we just let those ferrets run around um, the room. The whole you know we just let them free. Like is uh, I don't know set the we ferrets free. We let ferrets into the house free range right uh yeah. we were sleeping i think garrett was sleeping on the floor i don't know i can't remember if i was on the bed or i was on the floor and you were on the bed where it was safe and periodically through the night the ferrets <laughs> they would uh bite garrett on his toes what was it garrett they would just it, my bite toes him. and fingers they would anytime i'd move them they'd just come bite them hard um <laughs> That's not a story I came on to share, but yes. Yeah. I think that's the whole reason of this podcast. I have the scars to prove it. Well, and just, just for those uh, those who have absolutely stopped listening, Rachel's mom. Um, no, she's still listening. Rachel's group, mom is listening Well, right so this, now. As, as, as an educational podcast, a group of ferrets is called a business of ferrets. I just yeah. wanted to get that on the record. Yeah, which is the primary reason why why you went into business actually that's why you're getting your phd it's kind of a, a veterinary business degree well um anyway uh garrett uh has uh you know i've done so much such a great job i've even though i'm his older brother i've looked up to him uh so often when it comes to the gospel on on, on just his commitment level to it and his love for it and i've learned so much from him i just want to tell him how thankful and for him and uh how special he is that's a beautiful sentiment down i i i wanted to understand a little bit about what it was like for you guys growing up on the mean streets of shelly idaho yeah we uh grew up in shelly idaho um uh it's a small town some of you might have heard of it south of Idaho falls about six seven miles about 30 what is it what was it 3300 people when we were growing up it's essentially a giant potato field separated by occasional fences. Yeah, we <laughs> we lived out in the country, and uh, and Garrett and I grew up working in the in the wheat and potato fields, uh, moving pipe. Um, we come from a family of seven. Um, my oldest brother, our oldest brother Garn, um, is a is a bishop up in uh, Ammon right now. Uh, my sister Jennifer, our, I can see my, my our sister Jennifer lives in uh, Blackfoot. Uh, brother Nathan lives in Richland or the Tri Cities area in Washington, and then myself, followed by Garrett, and then um, David lives in Pocatello. And uh, our youngest brother Bryant is the one that passed away earlier this year that Garrett referenced on an earlier podcast, and we we lost him on January twenty first of this year, age thirty seven, and. Uh, <clears throat> that's our that's our family um of the seven and uh yeah we, we grew up uh grew up in uh good old shelly idaho so garrett what what's what's some of your favorite memories about uh growing up rurally 
Um, <clears throat> was it that your history professor or your history teacher in high school also was your gym coach? That was certainly true. Um, Is that where you gained your love of history? Yeah, because I love basketball. And so, you know, basketball and history, obviously, just kind of went right together. I'm, uh, Dallin's right. that um, I mean, we. I almost wonder if the, the reason why we started really liking history was that our dad liked it. I mean, we would talk about things. My dad was from the Netherlands and had immigrated to the United States when he was just a young boy. And so I, I think that might have been part of it. I think we had a fascination with what had happened around World War II. But um, yeah, we were reading. I mean, I mean, honestly, I remember when we were, I guess I would have been somewhere around 12 when we were, we went to San Diego on a trip. And we bought that Axis and Allies game on the trip in San Diego. And oh, played. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> was I, I think I was about 12, maybe you're, maybe you're 14, 15. I think a little bit younger than that even. Yeah. So, and, uh, it, you know, we, we, we played, you know, these historical board games and it made me read. And so for me, I just, I love, I loved reading history. Um, um, I loved studying the past. I primarily focused on like military history more so than other things. And, um, I always liked church history, but I also kind of always thought, well, it's already been done. I mean, I'm sure you know, it's already been all written down and it's not changing. So, you know, what am I going to do? But anyway. Yeah, I remember having a conversation with you. Um, you know, Garrett, um, I don't want to skip the part of the story about uh, something you'd mentioned in an earlier podcast. I'll circle back to it. But I remember having a conversation with Garrett while he was attending um, graduate school. Um, and he was going to do his dissertation, he was thinking about doing his dissertation in, in American military history, but he just, he didn't feel like it was, it wasn't settling right. He's like, I don't know. And then we just, I remember having a conversation about how a lot of people he was in the program with were doing their pet projects. And Garrett was feeling that he wanted to do something related to church history, but he was the only Latter-day Saint in the entire program. And he was wondering, but should a Latter-day Saint in the University of Colorado program, a PhD program, do something that is so, um, I guess, tied to your identity of, of who you were? Would, was it appropriate? And I remember talking that through with you and, and, and suggesting that, no, this, like other people are doing their pet projects. Why, it, well, you, you do it too. And uh, I remember... Um, within i don't know it wasn't very short thereafter you made a decision that that you're going to go all in on on church history a dissertation on church history um related to the, your dissertation was actually about the, the 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 saints leaving illinois and traveling to, to utah right garrett yeah it's about the i mean now everyone's going to fall asleep as we discuss dissertations this <laughs> remember this is a bonus podcast unlike the other podcasts you're not paying for this one um but uh the 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 dissertation was on uh, American relations with Mormons almost as a foreign entity when they're being expelled from Nauvoo and then traveling to uh, what will later become Utah and then also in the early days in Utah. So it covers that time period and and, and focuses on you know how the fe American federal government interacted with Latter-day Saints and treated them as essentially foreigners even though they were American citizens. So literally everyone stopped listening at this point. We can probably just, just end this. I, I remember, I remember after you had, I don't think you had defended your dissertation yet and you were applying at the Joseph Smith papers, right? What, what, what were you, what was the position you were applying for? Um, I, that, that it was just to be a, one, a, one of the people on the team working for the, you know, on the history. So, but it was like online specifically. Like well, that's what they eventually ended up saying. Well, we'll, for, we'll start you off on, you know, working on some of our web content and then, you know, see how that goes. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, you came out, you stayed, you stayed at, uh, cause you were living in Colorado at the time and you, you flew out. I believe that you got, was it, was it on the day of your interview or your first day that you got so sick? It was literally my first day of work. Yeah. I went in for like whatever little HR training. And then the very first day of actual work, I had the most violent food poisoning that, um, well, that I've had violent food poisoning a couple other times, but I'm not going to mention the location. Um, uh, 
but that was really bad. And so I had to call in sick the first day, which is an auspicious way to start your, your job. Uh, you had dinner at our house the night before. No comment. Okay. That's perfect. So, so then you're, so you're, you're in Shelly, Idaho. You, you have a love of history, uh, your brothers and you, you like to play, uh, games that are related to history. You have a father that has a passion for this. So can I, can I jump in right there, Richard? I just wanted to finish a little bit on, um, our father's history. Cause before you move on to, uh, the college years and so forth, but, uh, some people ask, people ask us all the time about our last name and it is Dutch. As Garrett's referenced a few times, our father was born in the Netherlands. Um, he was actually born during the Nazi occupation. Uh, our uh, grandfather, Peter Dirk Mott, was a sergeant in the Dutch military when the, the Germans invaded and uh, then ran for cover. And um, our grandmother is partially Jewish, um, and, but the, they never discovered that. And they hid out in another city from, from where they were originally were when the, the, the Germans invaded and uh survived it uh um there's plenty of stories about uh how they made it through starving nearly to death uh all the way through 45 and then they emigrated here in uh in 1948. so on that line that leg of the family we have uh you know true immigrants that you know came over after the war and on the other line on 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 our much picked on mom <laughs> she seems like she gets mentioned in well, all the we we love you mom we yeah, love Renee's you Renee's the only reason we have downloads she just keeps <laughs> downloading it so on mom's side of the family the family does have deep roots in the church it goes clear back to the Nauvoo period right Garrett have you have you oh, I know we have one far, farther back than that um so one of our, uh, Jonathan Harriman Hale is our, uh, and he's actually mission companions with, uh, with Wilford Woodruff on one of Wilford Woodruff's missions when he goes to the Fox Islands. Uh, in fact, it's actually a pretty funny story. If you're doing family history, it's not a funny story in any other way, but that, uh, apparently when Jonathan Harriman Hale had left Kirtland to go on this mission, everyone, even people in Kirtland had told them that this was going to be completely unsuccessful. No one there is going to listen to you, uh, which seems like a kind of a, the wrong message to send to a missionary on the way out to their not MTC center. You know what I mean? Just, uh, Hey, if you go, it's going to be a total worthless failure. And they, they, at least someone had prominently said to him that he wouldn't baptize a single person. And so Wilford Woodruff actually, uh, when they do find people to be baptized in the Fox islands, he actually, he, he has Jonathan Harriman Hale baptized that person first because to, he says it Woodruff writes to, to show that those naysayers were all false prophets that Jonathan Harriman, that he would baptize them. So yeah, they, they're uh, early converts. I mean, our other claim to, I guess some kind of fame is that he actually marries the sister of John Boynton. And we haven't really talked about the Kirtland apostasy or the Kirtland safety society. And at some point we might talk about that. Um, but John Boynton is one of the original members of the quorum of the 12 apostles who apostatizes specifically over the Kirtland safety society. And his sister is, is married to John. So she doesn't go out with, with her brother. She, she stays with Jonathan Hale. They will both tragically, I mean, they're, they're faithful. Um, in fact, I was just reading a letter um, that Jonathan Harriman Hale wrote to Brigham Young um, in 1845 from Carthage um, explaining, uh, you know, what was going on there. He was in Carthage because uh, they were there to try to protect people that had, had, had gone there to trial in 1845. As the, the violence is still bad, even though Joseph was murdered in 1844. Anyway, um, they will faithfully, you know, follow Brigham Young's call to, to head out West. I, part of the problem is, and now I'm into family history. As I start right now, my mom <laughs> is attempting to re-download this to try to tell me how wrong I am for part of this. But, um, uh, they actually both tragically die, um, in winter quarters. So they, they both don't make it both, uh, all of them, Jonathan, uh, Harriman Hale and, their kids, their little kids cross the plains with other families. They, they're essentially orphaned. And so 
Um, our family has really deep roots on, on that side. Um, they, th- my mom is, is, is a, is a tough lady, someone who has had a lot of horrible things happen to her in her life. And she just takes punches and just keeps right on going. And, and it, it, I think that part of that is the pioneer stock that's in her where she, you know, this is this is built into her that she follows God's will and does whatever God wants her to do. I did. I did also want to say I had I had the opportunity to know your father, and he was quite the impressive man. He comes as an immigrant, speaking no English. He, just just a little bit about your dad. I I, I loved your yeah. dad. He was such a great guy. Yeah, just I such an impressive guy. I mean, well, I mean, obviously there weren't any, you know. English as a second language programs for Dutch immigrants <laughs> in the 1940s. Um, that was not a, a main thing, but uh, my dad, uh, he had a rough uh, life. Um, it was his mom that was the primary driver of religion in their family. And, you know, she's the one who joined the church first back in Holland before the war. And it kind of, you know, cajoled my grandfather into joining after that. And, um, shortly, well, not short, I mean, I guess not long after they got here, when my dad was 12 years old, his, his mom died 13, 13. Yeah. Yeah. Died. And so he was left, um, with just his dad and his dad was not, uh, as kind and nurturing a man as you would want to have. And, uh, that will ultimately, I mean, there's a lot of stories I could tell if you're still listening, but, um, <laughs> the, it ultimately will, will, it will end up with, uh, my grandfather essentially ab- abandoning his kids. He will go away to work when they, they'll move to Southern Utah and he'll go away to work and essentially not really come back. Uh, and that happens when my dad's 15. And so he, um, he lives in a a root cellar in Kanab, Utah and goes and, you know, he works a diner in the mornings so he can get breakfast. He works a drive-in movie theater at night um, and, and lives in this place with no power and no water and showers in his, in his friend. I mean, he at least claimed that he showered. My guess is he didn't, but he, <laughs> he would shower at his friend's house and, you know, so he, he had, he had it pretty rough. And, and even with that, he, uh, he was determined to make something of himself and, and you know, eventually, um, you uh, obtained a, a master's degree in, in nuclear engineering and, uh, Stanford? from Stanford university. Yeah. And, um, uh, he was, you know, a great, he, he obviously then he worked for the department of energy for years as, an, as a nuclear engineer. And that's why we ended up in Idaho. It was not because he was a potato farmer, but, um, it, it, uh, it's interesting. He had, you know, he had obviously throughout his life, he had lots of different awards and things like that. But, um, in his office, he had a, a picture of, he had gone back to where in Kanab where this little, this dirt cellar in the ground and he'd taken a picture of it in the middle of all of his awards. There was this, there was this cellar that um, it's barely sticking out of the ground barely I mean, it out. looks i mean just ter- we saw that picture it's terrible yeah it, it it's a pretty horrific thing to to look at in fact and anyway I, so i think that his you know it's interesting once you become a parent and you you start to realize how hard this is uh, i mean obviously you know you assume that parenting is kind of hard until you have kids and then you have them and and you realize that the user manual doesn't even include anything. You know, you don't have any idea what's going on. And I think when I look back at my dad, knowing how horrible his upbringing was, how tragic and catastrophic it was, it really is a stunning thing that he ended up, I mean, having the family that he did. It, it just is. It's a stunning thing that he was able to make something of himself essentially against the odds. And then, and then that he, you know, was able to have a, uh, uh, you know, a, a family life and anyway, but yeah, my, my dad, uh, was always someone who, you know, wanted to help other people too. That was, he was a very quiet guy, but if he had, um, if he knew that someone needed something, 
he he did not hesitate to try to to try to help him. That was certainly an aspect of his character. Yeah, and Dad's been gone now. He di- passed away in 2015, so I think we're coming up on seven years now. And uh, and that was super super hard for Garrett for sure, all of us. But uh, Garrett, and my dad, were very close. Um, and you know the uh, w- you know Dad was the oldest of three. He had three younger sisters. And they also struggled through the because of the abandonment. So yeah, our grandpa. One of, one of them I know listens to the podcast because she texts me uh, Hi, occasionally. Auntie. So we love you. Yeah, yeah. We thanks for listening. I know that everything we're getting is wrong. You can let us know later. <laughs> you can text me and and ask me. You know what level of idiocy I've fallen to, but. No, but life was hard for him. You know, in those days, um, some of them, I, I believe, three of them, the oldest three, were boarded away to uh, other families. And then grandpa stopped paying. So you can imagine being a young kid and grandpa not paying the borders where you're staying and how hard that would be when they're, you know, the people you're living with are going to complain like your, your dad's not paying the bill anymore. As a kid, you're like, well, crud, I'm not even invited here. I'm not welcome here anymore. My dad's not paying. Where's dad? <laughs> so yeah, it was a hard, it was a hard life, but they've all done very well. They, you know, um, and they've overcome, you know, and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I think that's, that's the, uh, a beautiful story. Um, our aunts are beautiful women and have had great lives. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I wanted to touch back on something Garrett had said earlier. I get maybe Richard was alluding to it, but, um, did it have to do with ferrets? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, um, so Garrett, uh, goes through high school, straight A's all the way through. Did you get a single B in high school, Garrett? A B, no, 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 no. Garrett no. didn't get a B. <laughs> no, 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 Okay, straight A's all the way through high school, right? So you're thinking, hey, this guy. I think I got an A minus in ninth one, grade. One A minus in ninth grade. Was yeah, it? Was very... it Mr. Was it uh, Mr. Jensen's class? Or? No, Mr. Jensen, uh, Mike Jensen, who I hope someday is listening to this. He was, <laughs> you know, for all of the for all the uh, one the, of his kids will listen and send it to him. Hopefully. Probably for all of the teachers I had that that weren't trained in what they were teaching and look you know god bless them for being in idaho and working for what was a starting salary of eighteen thousand dollars a year that is not a lie that is what school teachers and i i don't even know it's probably only nineteen thousand now and that's just with inflation (laughs) but uh um he was someone who actually had an advanced degree in in government and so he was the government teacher and he was he was an outstanding Outstanding. government i mean just the kind of teacher that students should all have so that they actually understand why what they're learning matters. So I'd give him a shout out for sure. So with all that, that fancy pedigree, Garrett, you went away to the Velocity, uh Utah State. Well, I, if you recall, I went for a summer to Brigham Young University. We, we roomed together. That's right. Yep. I, I was, we were I was post-mission. Yep. And uh, Garrett there uh, were so was much, pre-mission. So much Mario Kart played. So uh, much Mario so, Kart. I mean, it, the level of Mario Kart being played was, was stunning. <laughs> um it was, it was, so when I was at, when I was at BYU, I had my first taste of religious education in, in a, in a college setting because look, I'd gone to seminary and I had, you know, I'd, uh, you know, some good seminary teachers and, um, I, you know, that, that really impacted me, but it was in a book of Mormon class it, at BYU when I was there for a summer that, you know, I, I'm a freshman brand. New, not only am I a freshman, I've never been like to a college at all. Right. And so it's actually a pretty hard transition. I feel bad for my students that they go from not really ever having to pay attention to what their seminary teacher is saying at all to being tested on it. Um, it's, it's a pretty rough transition because in church, I don't really have to pay attention. I mean, I'm talking about myself right now. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and you know, when you're, when you're in elders quorum, you don't have to pay attention when you're doing family. I mean, the reality is the idea that you'd be tested on, it's actually a really hard transition, but you know, uh, I, I, I'd, I'd read the book of Mormon a lot. This is, this is, uh, before my my mission, and so I was really prepping to go on my mission. I I was I, I'd read the Bible multiple times. I was I was ready. To, I wanted to to know the answers when we got there. And and the religious educator um, uh, brother Johnson at BYU had uh, we had a, a non member in the class, and he uh, he 
His name was Robert Keck. And he, uh, um, Brother Johnson pulled me aside one day. He'd never really talked to me before. He pulled me aside and said, hey, we have a guy in the class who's not a member of the church. And I'd like you to kind of help him through this because this is all brand new and we're studying Book of Mormon, you know, so he's never read the Book of Mormon. So I remember going to meet with this guy at, you know, BYU campus. So this is when I was living at Dallin's apartment um, with Harry and Dave, I believe, were the two. I uh, love Harry and Dave. Don't know where they are today. Oh, man. Hopefully we could you find to this. Harry. We love us some Harry the and Dave. The best part about Harry was that he had just amazing hair. Like his name was Harry and he had this amazing blonde curly hair. blonde hair yeah. that was... It was fantastic. Um, and uh, he was like a blonde young Seinfeld, the way he would crack jokes. Yeah, he was he was very funny, uh, much unlike ourselves. But he um, um, anyway, this this guy I started to, to mentor. And I remember the very first time I went over there, went over to his apartment, met him. And he was like, let's get this straight. I'm not a Mormon. I don't want to become a Mormon. I'm taking this class because I'm forced to take it. I'm here at BYU studying their geology program. I'm not going to become a Mormon. I don't want to become a Mormon. I want to pass this class so that it doesn't hurt my grade and I can go to graduate school in geology. And I was like, oh, okay, well, thanks for that. You know, I mean, but the, the amazing part about that was, and I just think about how inspired that, that professor was, that over the course of that summer term, he, as he's reading the Book of Mormon, the Book of Mormon has such power that it was transformative to this guy and and he ended up getting baptized it was it was it was awesome anyway i don't know why i told that story um but um uh it was awesome to be at byu but utah state had uh offered me a substantial scholarship obviously for my football and basketball <laughs> playing skills um you know they but uh and and, and so I, I made the decision that I was going to go to Utah State um, and because it was a, a great scholarship. And while BYU was cheap, it wasn't free. In my world, free has always beaten cheap. Um, and anyway, the, the, uh, so that I, after a summer at BYU, I went to Utah State, and that's where I, I did my undergraduate. And it's a good thing that I went there because that is where I met Angie. And so I'm going to let Angie tell the story of how we met. So when we first met, um, let's see, it was my first year at Utah State. Um, I was not planning on getting married. I did not want to get married um, that young. I had a bunch of stuff I wanted to do. And so when I met Garrett, I, um, anyway, we had lived in good old Merrill Hall at Utah State. Uh, Garrett lived over in Snow Hall, which was across like all of campus. And um, for some reason... When we were part of the ward where people were living at home, were in our ward, and they had underestimated how many people were in the ward that year that were living at home. And so our ward was too big. And um, so they took six apartments from Merrill Hall, and we were on the third floor, and half of the floor got sent to Garrett's ward. And so we were all the fresh meat, new meat at in the ward. Um <laughs> And so it was interesting. The very first Sunday I went, um, there was this guy who was up blessing the sacrament. And I was like, huh, interesting. Um, there's lots of cute guys it's, here. It's the first time anyone's ever blessed the sacrament before. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, I was, yeah. Anyway, his roommate had just gotten baptized that week, right? Yeah. And then, so he was getting confirmed um, in sacrament meeting. And so, um, so not only was this guy blessing the sacrament, he was confirming his um, roommate, a new member of the church. And then it came time to give talks in sacrament meeting and he was speaking. And then we go to Sunday school and the Sunday school t teacher doesn't show up. And so, of course, this same guy, Garrett, ends up giving the lesson and then we go to... She's overselling it because I was the Sunday school president. And I think as everyone's aware, that's where you put someone, you know, they couldn't put me anywhere else. Right? <laughs> so they... they... This, and this is, this is where the story of Dirk Moss begins, really, is you're doing everything. You're blessing the sacrament. You're confirming people. You're teaching lessons. 
That's a throwback to the very first podcast. <laughs> if you haven't heard the very first podcast, go back and listen to it. But anyway, so it ended up being a combined um, Relief Society Elders Quorum lesson. And so uh, Garrett ended up sitting right behind me. So at that point, I was like, who is this guy? And I think I want to get to know him better. Um, I end up like, yeah, we kind of talked a little bit that day. I don't know. I was being really sarcastic with him. And um, yeah, she kept turning around and kind of we were joking around about things. And the funny part was my roommate had just been baptized, turns to me and he's like, so you tell me all I had to do is get baptized in this church and blonde girls would start flirting with me. And I was like, yeah, that's actually about right. That's I, I should have led with that instead of the word of wisdom. But anyway, so we ended up running into each other up on campus um, later that week. And so it was interesting. And then he ended up getting assigned to home teach to my neighbors. And I was assigned to visit teach his neighbors. Let's just say I did visiting teaching a lot more than once a month um, just for a reason to go see him because our apartment. Literally the only time in my life I've done home teaching. (laughs) But so. And I was an elders quorum president. (laughs) Anyway, um, he was a slow mover. Um, That's not, that's just, that's. We should probably move on to a different No, topic. no, no. Well, no. So let's talk about rice tariffs. Well, okay. Well, so now we've got the Japanese rice tariffs, 780%. I would love to talk about that. But before Future we get it, <laughs> that'll be a three parter Japanese rice tariffs. But um, Angie, when did you have your first kiss? What, what were the circumstances oh. surrounding? No, just, I mean, just, just, no. just general. Just general. It's interesting you ask. Um, like I said, I didn't want to do this anyway. I'm not the best <laughs> storyteller. But um, anyway, we ended up, uh, Garrett invited me over. He actually had asked me the night before if he could kiss me. And I was like, yeah, that's not very <laughs> romantic. romantic. It's Don't be asking. It's called respectful. Being a gentleman. That's right. <laughs> So the next night, he set up a nice Chival- movie. Chivalry is dead, apparently. I can't even just... Anyway. Did, he set did up you, an... Oh. Did, did you start with my lady? My lady? Yes, I said... <laughs> I said, uh, ere these many weeks hath I been courting thee. <laughs> so anyway, so I was kind of rude back then. I was young. So um, anyway, so the next night, we hung out. He's like, do you want to come over? We'll watch a movie. So I sit down. He had popcorn in a big bowl. I guarantee that I did not say it in that creepy of a way. (laughs) So anyway, so we sit down to this movie, got a big bowl of popcorn. He hits play. And all of a sudden, I quickly realize it's Joseph Smith, the American prophet. So I was like, I don't know where he's going with this. It's very on brand, Garrett. (laughs) Well, I knew then what I know now, and that was that I'm going to have a podcast about Joseph Smith, and we are going to have to start 20 years early on on, on getting that messaging right. So anyway, so he slowly works his oh, way okay. uh, need, arm need, around, and then he gives me that. my first kiss while we're watching uh, this Joseph Smith American prophet. So we always say, I mean... So, I mean, obviously I was being dishonest with her because I was telling her that I was going to be a doctor and I just didn't tell her I was going to be the kind that didn't help anybody or make any money. <laughs> but um, uh, but we also say, you know, like the old story you'd hear in seminary that she knew what I was when she picked me up, you know, as the uh, we did watch other movies. This makes me sound like I'm some kind of. It was cute. I ended up seeing quickly how much the gospel meant to him in his life and how devoted he was to Joseph Smith. At this point, he hadn't decided for sure what he was going to do in the future for a job. And so he had maybe thrown around the idea of teaching seminary or um, teaching history. And then um, anyway... It's a really long story. All of Maybe them highly lucrative jobs. <laughs> if we don't lose all the uh, listeners with this boring story from me, um, maybe in the future. But definitely, we just celebrated 20 years of marriage um, this last June. And I definitely can say without a doubt that I have seen the Lord's hand in um, the progression of Garrett's 
career and his path of where he needed to be. And every time when he was applying to grad school and everything else, I, we just kept thinking like, oh, we're going to go this way. And then it would be like, oh, nope, never mind. And then uh, we just kept getting led in different directions until it came to the point Garrett is where he's at now today. And um, I'm so grateful for Dallin and all that he did while we were in grad school and stuff. He helped us out so much. Um, him, him and his wife, Heather. I want to touch on that real quick. That's oh, right. So oh I met my beautiful, lovely, awesome wife, Heather. She, Only, she doesn't listen to this, does she? she You're going to have to force her to listen yet, to yeah. this just to get She'll the never know what I'm looking for. Here, but, uh, yeah, she's still in school and, to, and, and spends a lot of time on it right now. And uh, she's trying to get her. She's in medical school right now. but So she doesn't have time to listen. But I only know my wife because uh, Heather and Angie were friends in high school. And because Garrett met uh, this awesome girl, Angie. I later, sub, you know, several years later, well... I mean, I don't know how many years later we started dating. I guess I met her before your wedding, but uh, we started dating, I think, what, three years later after that? You guys were yeah. married 20 years. We're married 17. Yeah. So. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So I know my wife because of it. But um, uh, I wanted to, that's one of the things I wanted to allude to. So Garrett, going through Utah State, how many, how many B's did you get going to Utah State? I received an A minus. Not a single B. Okay. Well, so. because he had a history class that it he was, was writing a paper oh no on. it was an anthropology class okay. at, and the uh, professor because he was teaching at utah state wanted to make it very clear how wrong any person was uh who was a mormon in his class i believe he started the class with there's some people in air quotes this area who seem to believe that there could have been some family that came to northam and just essentially denigrating the Book of Mormon. And so I I perhaps was intemperate in my <laughs> further pursuits in my responses in the class. So Garrett goes all the way through high school, 1A minus. He goes all the way through undergrad, 1A minus. Um, Garrett takes the GRE. How would you score on the GRE, Garrett? I don't even remember. I don't even know what it was really to... good. He's very. I mean, I guess it was good enough to get into place, I guess. Well, and then Garrett had a dream. As he's mentioned this on a previous podcast. Garrett had a dream to go to Stanford because our, our dad uh, went to Stanford, got one of his master's degrees there. And so we were, we, you know, he was alum. So Garrett had a dream to go there. Plus, you know, there was other prestigious schools you applied for. And if anyone deserved to get in based on their academic merit, Garrett did. I mean, this guy went clear through high school, 1A minus, uh, clear through uh, undergrad, 1A minus. Awesome GRE score. He also and, had a lot of, um, like, volunteer. He volunteered a, or to tutor a bunch of athletes, student athletes, and a bunch of extracurricular stuff. Right. So, um, but... Garrett's told this story before, but uh, Garrett, what what schools did you apply? Garrett applied to all these schools. I don't Speaking want to call any of them out, but I, I did apply to several other schools. And, okay, let's not um, call them out. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, and it was pretty crushing, honestly. I mean, it was. It, I remember it was stunning to me. Well, Richard, I remember talking to Richard about this. Richard, uh, I'd like to tell the story of. You should. You should tell the story how we how we met. Uh, I remember. So, so finish finish okay. there because I remember. So, I remember that I actually was the one that read your acceptance letter. Yeah. To so you yeah, the we were we were traveling. We were out of town, and and and. Uh, so I'd you, received you'd met Gary, you or you met Richard at Utah State. I right? met. Well, we'll tell that story in a minute. But we met <laughs> Richard. Uh, Another podcast. Yeah, probably uh, part two of the bonus that you're already not listening to. <laughs> at this point, the counter for the podcast somehow is going backwards. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah I just got a message from Apple that we have been discontinued. So uh, that came in right now. Well, it's fair. It's it's the same strategy that Ferris Bueller had with his friends. Yeah, the Porsche. We right? put it in reverse. <laughs> it takes the mile. We decided, hey, everyone wants to listen to church history. I know. Let's just talk about Garrett. This is the reason why I didn't want to do this. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I'd gotten rejected from these other schools like I had talked about in that previous podcast. And I'd applied to the University of Colorado. I, I mean, it, look, it was a great program and a great school. But the the real reason I'd applied is that my brother was there. And I, I mean, I love my brother. And my brother wanted me to apply there. And so I did. I mean, and... So as I kept getting these rejections, my assumption was I was just going to get rejected again. And I was on a trip and 
my mail came and, and, I, and, and so I was, you know, wondering because it was the last one left and you know, I had Richard read the mail. So I've violated federal law. Yeah. So I this is actually them, part right? of, this is I actually tampered. The last 20 years have been an elaborate it's, sting it's operation. Statute of limitations no, now, no, so. no, we have a lawyer. At, no, Dallin, Dallin's a, Dallin has his law degree. So he's here to advise Richard as a counsel for the fact that he federally violated uh, Isn't the mail. Isn't there statute of limitations? Um, I don't think so. Not on this. <laughs> Not on something as egregious as opening my mail with my permission. Uh, and he began to read it and it was an acceptance letter. And I mean, I got to tell you that there, there are a few times that I've had that much weight lifted on me. I remember when I called Dallin. I can only assume that when we talked about Joseph Smith exulting uh, when, uh, when, when he was talking about the resurrection and he saw that vision of the resurrection and, and brothers and, and, and sisters and husbands and wives, they cried out for joy as they grabbed to hold one another even before they came up out of the grave. That's the kind of exultation that my brother Dallin gave. I called him. And he, he couldn't have been more excited. And, and honestly, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to, to go through graduate school without the support that Dallin and, and his wife, Heather gave us. I mean, uh, they gave us a place to stay. They, um, he was my, my friend has always been my best friend. Um, but well, we got the chance to go to church together too. And, uh, you know, how many years were, were you guys there? Garrett? Six years there. Well, Garrett was getting his PhD from the very non-religious University of Colorado, a religious, uh, we'll say. Um, but yeah, Garrett and I look alike enough, and our wives are both um, taller blondes, and um, our voices are very similar. So you can imagine, it's over six years, uh, the number of times that people confuse Garrett and I for each other, or our wives for each other. And in a stunning fashion, uh, Dallin uh, worked with the young men. And he worked with a guy in the young men's with him. Now, Dallin had lived in the ward for, for years. I mean, you'd been in the ward how many yeah. years before we I, got there? I bought that house in 2003. Yeah, so, so. so he'd lived in the he'd already lived in the ward for several years. What year was this now, Garrett? Uh, no, five? No. We moved to Colorado in 2003, May so, of 2003, so but we lived, lived in Boulder. Yeah, yeah. Lived in Boulder that's right. Something. You anyway, in Boulder at first when you got there. So yeah. at any rate, this guy who had worked for years with Dallin in the young men's and Dallin's like one of these amazing young men's leaders. He's the young men's leader that you want your kids to have because he's going to change their lives. And so this guy who knows him well, no, has known him for years. One day at church walks up to me and starts talking to me about the upcoming camp out for the young men, which I'm clearly not going on because a, I'm not in the young men and B it's camping. And, and, and so your aids camping. So I much. hate it. I hate, yeah. There's so much hate. And it's because of the camping I did when I was in scouts when I was a kid. And, um, uh, it, it, he carries on this conversation with me for quite some time there in the foyer at church and never at any point recognizes that I'm not actually the person he is called to serve with that he's been serving with for two years. Yes, uh, that was a beautiful time, and I am so thankful that uh, Garrett and I, you know, living right next to each other, um, we lived right next to each other for all that time, and it was a beautiful time. And then Garrett goes through the PhD program. How are your grades in the PhD program, Garrett? He graduated with a 4.0. Uh, 4.0. I, I don't know if it was, no, it, was, it, was, it was summa cum laude. Summa cum laude. Okay, so... One reason I point this out is, I'm, yeah, I'm bragging about my brother, and maybe that's not, uh, I should be doing that in a more humble way. I apologize. but uh, I think we do it because he'll never admit to any yes, of this, and this is so why, we have to rat him out. This is why I wanted to come on and do this, because I, I he will not talk about himself. Um, Garrett does, um, he tries to, when it's the world isn't consumed by a pandemic, he tries to do church history tours um, at church history sites. He'll try to do a couple a year. Angie usually goes with them and helps them with that. And, um, uh, I, I joined him, uh, this summer for a day and I just, he, and, uh, after he'd been with these people for several days, I would just start talking about Garrett's book and they were looking at me like, what are you talking about? I said, no, Garrett's book. He's talked about his book with you guys all right. And they said, no. And I'm like, oh, I think it was like the fourth day of the tour. Uh, and they hadn't heard about Garrett's book yet. And so I started telling them all about Garrett's book. So. Um, 
I think Richard's mentioned on a previous, you guys did talk about it on one yeah, podcast. Yeah, on, on another bonus podcast that no one listened to. It was very, very similar. It's a great book. Garrett, with along with his partner, Michael McKay, actually wrote the book on the the translation of the Book of Mormon, the day to day, like how it was done, not not just the what, but how uh, Joseph went about it, and, and those around him who helped him. You guys can go to Amazon and and Google it. <laughs> no, don't laugh. Garrett gets no gets nothing from this. He gets no royalties. Uh, I'm just saying, if, if people want to know, so I want to tell you, it's called From Darkness Unto Light. If you go to Amazon and type in From Darkness Unto Light, his book will pop up. Uh, all the royalties from it go to the BYU, right, Garrett? Uh, there, we're we're hoping at some point we can get some as well. <laughs> even even yeah. BYU doesn't get the, no, the royalties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from the Religious Studies Center. <laughs> Religious so, Studies, and, yeah. And does rip up. Yeah. So Garrett gets nothing from it, but it is, is a great book on. Um, and you got you, everyone listening at home knows, and Richard and, and Garrett have alluded to it several times. This is self-produced. There is no uh, professional staff here. There is no. I think everyone is well aware <laughs> that there is no part if, of this. If that... they weren't before, they yeah. certainly are now. Yeah. And, uh, and, and P.T. Barnum, Garrett ain't. I will yeah, tell you. Yeah. That. This is uh, this is. Uh, uh, held together with spit and gum uh we we are living on the largesse of a wonderful uh woman who who donated some some microphones to us we are living on the largesse of a of uh one of our really good friends uh who's a bishop who actually essentially forced me to do the podcast by paying for the 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 advertisement i mean for the for the uh the intro, yeah, paying for the intro and, and the and, and all and, the hosting and the fees artwork and, and the hosting fees, without really actually talking to me. No, about no, he, he just did, he this essentially is just he did just it, just and did then it. he was like, trying, "Well, he, it's already up there. Now you've got to record stuff." <laughs> he he's been trying to push this for for six seven years Ever since I lived in. Lake. Finally, just just did it and said, "Well, there you go. Now it's happening." Yeah, we tried for a while to get Garrett to do this, and um, Garrett resisted. And one of the reasons why was was um, well, there's a lot of podcasters out there that go off the rails a little bit and start, you know, uh, maybe <laughs> taking positions that the I'm... brethren haven't taken. And Garrett, you know, he he hasn't appreciated that approach and never wanted to fall into that category, and so was resisted it. And and but but finally felt like it was time to to talk about church history. Um, uh, after Garrett got his PhD, right? At Kasuma he, uh, he got a job. One of the couple people hired at the Joseph Smith papers. And that was a huge thing. Cause when you're going to school for a PhD in history, uh, the looming question that stays with you all those years is what the federal government actually pre sends you unemployment forms. <laughs> it's, it's the most efficient thing they do. How am I going to get a job? How am I going to support my family? Garrett actually worked through school doing what he I worked was, at Home Depot. He worked at Home Depot and a pizza place those for two places mostly there. at Home Depot. He was the guy that uh, would take the calls and transfer the calls to where they went, and then you do the announcements over yeah, the intercom. Yeah. Thank you for calling the Broom. Field Home Depot. <laughs> That's where he got to uh, practice his great radio voice. He actually got fired on Christmas Eve. On Christmas or, Eve, I guess not fired, laid off. They laid were off, laying yeah. off a yeah. bunch of people, so it was. But they made nothing, sure they made sure it was me. Nothing says Merry Christmas <laughs> like you're laid off. But. So, um, Garrett, how many years were you at Joe Smith Papers? Uh, I was at the Joe Smith Papers for about four and a half years before I was hired uh, in the religion department at BYU. And then, um, what would you say, Samantha? Um, I was just going to say, a lot of people have asked on this podcast how much research Garrett does and how much is scripted or written down. But our good friend Lisa actually calls Garrett Google Garrett because he has like the most amazing mind. Um, I, not so much. I'm good with the living. He's good with the dead. So we actually make a good like pair that makes it sound like i'm an undertaker gary <laughs> 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 gary has a hard time remembering people's names right I that's have, what she I meant have by a that. really hard time remembering people's names who are alive but when it comes to harvesting organs yeah you're the best when it comes to <laughs> me and no, i mean it, it is it has always bothered angie that i can't remember the name of someone that we met 
but I remember when Andrew Jackson fought the Battle of New Orleans. <laughs> and that. But really, it's helpful when you play Trivial Pursuit. I'm grateful to always play couples. There's nothing that says a life of poverty is, is valuable than winning a couple times of Trivial Pursuit. So I <laughs> recommend most people to go after that. I mean, honestly, I, I, I do have to give a shout out. Angie's one is being too modest. I mean, my wife is legitimately the greatest human being that that anyone will ever meet uh she is the kindest most tender-hearted person who not only has a desperate desire to serve god she has a desperate desire to serve other people because she has the ability to see god and other people in a way that that really no one else does and uh so i might have studied a lot about the church in my life, but you only truly see Christianity in action when you see the things Angie does and says for other people. And it's actually pretty hard to see it because she does it secretly all the time. She's like a constant secret Santa. If, if, if in March and April and May, I mean, I guess then, you know, secret leprechaun in March. I mean, she's constantly trying to help people and, um, she has uh, demonstrated to me uh, true Christianity uh, in a way that just studying could not. Go ahead, Angie. I was just going to say that's very sweet. Um, that's why I didn't want to come on here. I am definitely behind the scenes type person. Well, um, and uh, at your work at the uh, at BYU, Garrett, um, and you've had so many so many different experiences um, working at BYU. Um, I owe one thing. One of the things I wanted to point out about Garrett is uh, talking some about his talents, maybe embarrassing him a little bit here, but he's one of these guys that can read a book in like hours, like a thick book and he'll remember everything. Um, and that, that it helps him with this talent he has for this. He was born to do this. Um, you know, I, 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 and marvel at his ability to to do things uh you know to, to research to remember there's a lot of things he discovered in his research that were first time discovered not he did not rehash previous research when it came to a lot of these things that are especially in the book and other things related to joseph smith um and and so i, I wanted to point that out and um I, I i know you guys mentioned it before but it's worth saying again that this podcast is free form there's not a script here it's pretty amazing. I, I, honestly, I've been, I, I, I was excited when they started doing the podcast. I want to listen. And I started listening to it. I'm like, I'm the biggest fan of this thing. This is, this is great. I get, can't get enough of it. And it's all free form. And Richard and Garrett have done just an amazing job with this. I have to second that. They do a great job. And yeah, none of it's scripted. They just say, what do you want to talk about? Okay, we're going live. <laughs> we do say we're going live. <laughs> And she shouted. We then, say, we'll and, do it live. And we like Bill O'Reilly. And then we do it. But one thing that people don't know, uh, another behind the scenes, is that a majority of our podcasts have been recorded with Richard's wife, Becky, laying on the floor, uh, uh, listening, and, and sometimes falling asleep. Angie also. They, they like to listen to us record. There was, there was one. This was my favorite. This was my favorite thing. So they, they come in and they, and they sit in and... And it's it's fun to be a part of this because I have I have nothing to do with any of this. I think it's this is you know how many ever episodes in it is glaringly obvious that I don't know anything about any of these things, and so I I enjoy this. I'm <laughs> I'm kind of the first listener to these podcasts. As Garrett's just riffing for an hour about uh, about you know whatever townships. <laughs> That was the, the darkest moment of yeah, our podcast that, until, that was, until this podcast. Yeah, that was the, the darkest moment. But this moment. is a bonus one, so you don't have to listen to it. Is it dark because I'm on it? No, or? no, it's dark. Well, it's just, it's just Garrett talked about townships for 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was maybe a little too far down the rabbit hole. Uh, I'd like. I wish we get. We we need to get Becky to talk. One day I will oh, get her on here. Well, there's zero chance. She's of that. shaking her head. But I will say, So one of my one of my absolute favorite favorite things is that and garrett's very garrett's self-deprecating and it's it's great um but we were recording like podcast three or four or whatever i think it was so the most listened to podcast and and so here's the other thing now we're we're an hour in no one is listening to this anymore not even my mom no no renee stopped but rachel's mom yes Ra thank you rachel's mom um but so 
it was so the martyrdom podcast and we uh, again cannot even begin to thank people that we, i mean i still can't I, I stand all amazed at every time the people when i look at how many people have listened to this it's just been really great yeah, Richard, isn't it uh, the other day you guys were showing me that it's the number 15 podcast, yeah, religious yeah, podcast in the entire country? Uh, yeah, religion and spirit. Number two yeah. in Latter-day Saint, right? Wow. Well, we are, I don't even know if we're listed under Latter-day. No. We, we're pretty ambiguous. Uh, we didn't list it. We're the number Day. three Buddhist podcast. <laughs> yeah. I do know that. We're seventh we're, in Seventh-day Adventist, which is <laughs> odd. But, yeah, uh, we, are, we, are, we are ahead of uh, Joel Olstein's podcast. Well, that was we were for a day. I'm sure that goes back and forth every day. But, but that was the greatest day of my life. That's the one thing that they always say um they definitely are doing this to just help people in the church i mean really ratings are a bonus but they definitely just want to help people and answer questions well so that Plus was we were 737 <laughs> in canada so well I'm not sure we're just, hitting just the right manitoba. market hey manitoba we aren't getting any love but so so angie just said a very sweet thing and now i'm about to make fun of her but so <laughs> what what happened this is what our entire relationship <laughs> So, so what happened is, is that, uh, the martyrdom, the martyrdom episodes are far and away the most popular of, of any of the episodes. We have almost five times the amount of listeners to martyrdom one, two, and then the bonus uh, episode on the martyrdom than, than anything else. And cause Garrett, you, you give a lot of information, you help to contextualize it. And then your, your testimony at the end is just incredibly powerful. And it's the most popular one. Well, I don't know that it was during that one, but it was it was in and around that time. So, so Becky and Angie. So oftentimes we record these on like a Friday nights, Saturday nights, and so you we know, have legitimately recorded them when we were on vacation together as a couple. Yeah, yeah, we were. <laughs> we were. On, if you're wondering why the audio quality is so bad, a we don't know what we're doing. B we don't have any money, and C. C A, C -A and B. Yeah. So the the other thing is is that so so Garrett is in this impassioned uh, explanation of some something, and we hear because it's you know one two o'clock in the morning. Our wives have fallen asleep, and Angie gives out a snoring snort, like like some sort of a bull that's about to be you know ridden at the <laughs> national finals rodeo. In my defense, I do sit through a lot of firesides, and I hear this stuff over and over. She's like, it's the so it every time. In her defense. <laughs> I'm boring as 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 anything she's ever heard. So. It's the fair. It's the yeah. fairest thing. It so, was. Well, it was. I, it was I'm my favorite. To say that that's our other demographic. Our demographic are people who have questions about the church. Rachel's mom, my mom, and anyone who has insomnia and needs to go to sleep. That's our <laughs> other demographic. <laughs> that was one of my favorite uh, my favorite parts. I know. I know. We are. Uh, we are you know at at an hour mark of a of a bonus episode but i i, I wanted i believe when they convinced me to do this they said we'll take 10 minutes 10 minutes tops. 15 minutes yeah i am a known like liar. everything else richard has <laughs> ever done he's the fastest hurl but of lies <laughs> This is true. This is great. I I will. Becky's shaking her head. Yes. Yes. That's she also the no. She's she, he's kidding. She's fallen asleep long ago. <laughs> um. But uh. I I I did. We, we've gotten a like I said at the beginning. We got feedback from several people, and it was so great to have Dallin here and to have Dallin be able to share so much about his brother that he loves so much and that he's so proud of, and for to have Angie here and to talk about her husband and what a wonderful man he is and how much she loves him and. And uh, so hopefully uh, everybody who uh, has had an opportunity to listen to this will get a little bit better understanding of of who Garrett is and where he comes from and kind of where his passion for these things comes from. And we hope that you you really enjoyed this this bonus Christmas episode. Please remember that you didn't pay for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't demand a refund. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody who, does, who has listened and, and listens in the future. And have a Merry Christmas if you happen to be listening to this around the Christmas season. If not, you know, uh, happy Rosh Hashanah, whatever is going on <laughs> at the time that you listen to it. Thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you for listening to the Standard of Truth podcast, hosted by historian Dr. Garrett Dirkmott. If you know anybody that could benefit from the material in this episode, please share it with them. And for more resources, visit standardoftruth.com. Until next time.